Hi, and welcome to this first episode on Ruby on Rails development. And my name is Jordan Hudgens. Uh, I'm going to be walking you through how to build out a very powerful Ruby on Rails application focused on enterprises and businesses. There's a ton of tutorials out there on how to build out different social networking type of applications using uh, Ruby on Rails, but uh, one thing I've found, I've been doing development for quite a few years now, and I've never been asked to build a social network or anything like that, but I have been asked to build a lot of different types of uh, business applications. And so that's what I'm going to be teaching you. And so th through this course, we're not really going to be talking a lot about theory or things like that. We're going to be building out an actual application and seeing how it works from uh, building, uh, setting up your development environment all the way to deploying the finished application for the client. So uh, to start out, uh, go to nitrous.io and nitrous is the development environment we're going to be using. Uh, setting up Ruby and Rails and all the things associated with it can be uh, a pretty exhausting process, especially if you're wanting to use it on multiple machines. Nitrous is a great tool so you can use it and be able to uh, use it on your iPad, on uh, your computer, whether you have a Mac, a Linux, or a PC. Uh, it's a really a very powerful tool. So I use it, but uh, I'm going to sign up for a new account so you can see how that process works, specifically how you can get it going for a, a Ruby on Rails application because they do offer the ability to do PHP or Python or other different uh, programming languages as well. So for username, I'm going to go Jordan D. Hudgens and go email address. Okay, and click sign up for free. And yeah, it also it is free to use, um, especially starting out while you're learning. Uh, they have some paid options that uh, that make it give you some additional functionality. But for everything that we're going to be doing, the free version will work absolutely great. So uh, if you're following along, uh, pause the video, go hit that confirmation link, and I'll be right here waiting. Okay, if you hit the confirmation link, this is what you should see. And as you can see, uh, Nitrous does have uh, some other options where you can build out Ruby on Rails, Node, Python, Go, or PHP apps. But this is Ruby on Rails course, so we're going to pick this. And we're going to just go with their uh, name they set for us. And we're going to say US West and click create box. Uh, next. And it gives you a little tutorial and it's setting it up for us right now. So uh, while that's loading, I'll give you a kind of a brief demo of how it works. Your files and your whole file system is gonna be right here. Uh, your code is going to be here and it also gives the ability to have tabs up at the top so you can uh, switch between other tabs. And then on the bottom is where your console or terminal is going to be. And one of the things I actually love about using Nitrous uh, compared to other even local development environments is the fact that I can have access to all of these things all without having to switch screens or uh, switch between programs because usually you'll have to, I'll have to switch to access the console then to the code and then the file system uh, but with nitrous it's it's all right here and so uh, I'm gonna pause the video while it loads up the environment and I will start it back up as soon as everything's ready to go and here we are uh, if you ever have any issues with it loading especially the first time uh, it's a pretty easy fix. Just click refresh and it'll uh, load your system up. Um, but now we can see all the, we have our file here, uh, the initial readme. If you want to read this, it explains kind of how the system works.
um, we can click out of that and we're going to create our first Rails application. Now the Rails application we're going to be creating is going to be called Enterprise Ape. So to do that, you come down to the terminal and type in Rails New and then just the name of your project. So uh, this one's going to be Enterprise Ape. And make sure not to allow any spaces or anything like that. And then click Return and it's going to create that for us. So uh, that's going to build it out and now I'm going to create a new oh there it is so it's all nice and done. Now uh, one mistake that a lot of people that are new to uh, Rails make is they don't always realize where they are in terms of the file system so um, make sure you hit refresh here to bring up new files and you can see there is our application and if you click the arrow next to it it'll show you all the different files in it. it shows the app file, config file, everything there. Now to actually get inside of it from the terminal though we have to change in that directory so to do that you hit CD space and then just start typing EN and then hit tab and it'll uh, It'll finish it off and auto complete it for you. Hit return. And now you can see right here that we're in the enterprise ape directory. So uh, from here we can start up the Rails server. Start up by just typing Rails S, hit hitting return, and there we go. So now all we have to do is come up to preview come down to port 3000 and the, the way we know to go to port 3000 and they give options for others but it says that because right here when it started up it actually says it's doing the development on it gives this URL which is really just your local URL and then 3000 so uh, we know to pick port 3000 and there's our application so that's cool to see um, now we're going to open up a, another console tab and we're going to create our first system and it's important to know whenever you create a new console tab that uh, if you look at your uh, command line it puts you back into the root so make sure that you uh, CD and go right back into your application hit return and now we're gonna type rake db create and all that's going to do is going to create our database for us and it looks like uh, they actually created ours already so that's good but that makes sure that it, it was built and now we're going to start building out the first steps of our application so this is a fun part we're going to type in rails g and g stands for generate so rails g scaffold and that's spelled s-c-a-f-f OLD, so Rails G scaffold, and because this is an enterprise application, we're going to create a invoice system. So this is going to be one component, and so we'd say Rails G scaffold, and then we have to pass it in some parameters. So we want to definitely make sure all of our invoices have a date, and so we're going to give it the date time uh, parameter and so the way that you do that you see how you uh, separate these out uh, on the left hand side you put what the name that you want it to be is and then on the right hand side you put the type and there are a specific set of types you have to pick you can't just you know kind of randomly pick what you want uh, Rails has that all set up so um, I'll make sure to put some links on where you can go get that information but I'll give a, a nice wide array of them here so uh, date and date time so this is gonna say when the invoice uh, was created up and then we'll say company it seems like a good thing to go with and that's a string because a company is just a name then another thing that we'd want would be the tax so the tax and the tax is going to be a decimal 
we can have a salesperson. And that's going to be a string as well. And I think that's going to be good. You may be wondering why don't we have a date and why don't we have products and that kind of thing. And the reason for that is because uh, you don't want to put everything into the same database table because if you did that then uh, it makes your application one slow but two not very flexible so we're going to create a database table just for products and then those products when they're added up together are going to total up and be the total for the invoice so uh, we're going to get to that in future tutorials but for right now our invoice is going to have a date a company a tax rate and a salesperson. So hit return and it's going to build all of that for us and now we have to uh, because what this did it created a lot of different files for us. This is one of the coolest parts about Rails. Uh, we can see it all right here. Click on uh, app and then views. You can see invoices is here see all these files that were created these were all built uh, with that one command we just gave and so and it did a lot of others here it made us controllers made a model made a lot of different things before we can go forward though if we tried to run this right now we'd actually get an error message because we need to uh, we need to do what's called a migration on the database and it created the migration file for us and we can find that by going to DB folder clicking migrate and clicking on this one and it will show that it is creating a table called invoices and as a date company tax salesperson and it shows all the items right here and you may notice that we called it invoice but they turned it into invoices. That's some um, Rails magic where it actually pluralizes certain things for you. Um, and we'll get into that further later on. But for right now, just know it's important when you do your scaffold or create a model that uh, use singular and also it's capitalized. Um, okay, so now let's uh, uh, run the migration. So to do that, you type in rake db migrate. Type it in exactly like that. Hit return. And it, if uh, it worked properly for you, this is exactly what you'll see. And now we can uh, we'll uh, restart the server. To restart the server, hit control C. Hit the up arrow and start it back up. And the reason for that is because whenever you do a migration, in order to pick up all the changes, just uh, you need to start the server over. So hit preview, port 3000, and you may wonder why it's showing us this, and it's because we actually need to go to see our invoices. So I'm going to hit this and invoices, and there we go. There's our page. And the neat thing about this, not only does it have... Uh, this static page it actually has the ability and built in the ability for us to add all of those items right from scratch right out of the box so to do that click new invoice and you can see it has each one of our fields it has a date so we'll say the date was the 8th which was yesterday the company is XYZ widgets the tax rate is 7.5 the salesperson was David Mark. Hit create invoice. And there we go. Hit back. And you can see it actually listed it right in our invoices. You can see this is the, uh, uh, the URL we went to to start off with. And in addition to showing it right here, it actually built three different links specific to this item. So if you click show, He'll take you to a detailed view of that item. Click edit. He'll autofill all the forms. So say the tax rate was actually 6.4. Hit update invoice. And you can see it's reflected there. Hit back. And there's our new invoice or our new tax amount. So 
uh, and destroy will delete the item. So uh, we'll add one more so you can see how it lists them out. And this one's going to be ABC Plumbing. Tax rate for them is 5.5. Sales person is Tiffany. I should probably correct that. There we go. Hit create invoice. There's all our information. Hit back. And now it's all right here. This obviously is a pretty hideously ugly looking application. However, it has a ton of functionality. And uh, it, in, set, in a very short period of time, um, when I got started building applications, I built PHP based applications. And to build out all of this kind of functionality into an app from scratch would have taken several days. So uh, this did it in literally one command in one second. So um, it's very powerful and what we're gonna be able to do is start learning how to use a lot of other Rails tools to take this application, take it from where it was nothing to a, a truly powerful enterprise application that will do invoices, manage employees, create payroll, do all kinds of things like that. So stay tuned and please let me know if you have any questions at all or if you run into any issues as uh, you're building out your application.